In this video, I'll be showing you how to convert a Dyson V7 or V8 vacuum cleaner from a standard rear filter to a HEPA filter. And we're going to be using this Key Tidy back cover and HEPA filter add on kit. This is the only set I could find that had this adapter that's necessary that's going to replace this original filter back here. And it came with the HEPA filter, and I don't know how much you know you should trust this HEPA filter, like if it's certified or not. It's probably not certified, they probably just claim HEPA. But you can always get a official Dyson HEPA filter to fit on the back uh, cartridge. The problem was that I couldn't easily find just this piece by itself. And maybe if you look in some Dyson um, parts and accessories, then you can find that piece. I didn't check that. This was just an easy buy off Amazon like this. And the reviews seem to suggest that it was a good quality and good fit. So let's check out what's in here. We've got the adapter piece. The quality looks pretty decent. There is an O-ring here that should seal it off against the motor housing. And then there's a gasket here that will seal off against the filter. Now that's one thing with HEPA filtration is it's important that everything is properly sealed because otherwise if, you're, if your seals aren't good, if it's not sealing, then you can get air bypass and then you're losing the HEPA filtration because it's not passing through the HEPA filter. Here's the filter itself. Now I've read that this HEPA filter actually gives more airflow, better airflow than the original filter. And that's possible because there's more surface area inside the HEPA filter. This does this HEPA filter looks questionably manufactured in terms of quality and spacing. Like you see, like here, here there's a lot of spacing, and here there's weird spacing too. But everything else around looks fairly evenly spaced out, and it's potted in there, so that should in, in, that should indicate that it's it's gonna sealed well, and it's not it's gonna there's no not gonna be any air bypass. This is going to fit together on the back like this. There we go, and it should just attach in, snap on. Feels like a good fit. There's a warranty card, but there's no instructions. There are instructions on the box. It says, first step is open the back of the vacuum with a thin hard sheet. There's not exactly indication as to where to place the thin hard sheet, but it looks like there's probably snaps inside this housing that snap into these areas. So if we pinpoint those areas with like used gift cards or something. It's, that's a thin hard sheet. You can probably get in here and pry this open. Okay, be careful not to cut yourself like I did. Maybe you should wear some gloves. Ouch. I think my my hand jammed into this edge and cut some scraped some skin off. So the way to remove this is this just snaps in and really the only way you can take it out is you're just going to have to use something to pry this open to, to snap it out. And I'm using these gift cards here, old gift cards, and I'll just see if I can just put some in, put as many in there as I can to try to snap this out. Because if you're not careful, you'll do like I, what I did before and like cut yourself on the side here. So. If I can pry in here and get enough leverage in there to get it to snap out, you can twist a little bit. There you go. I did it again. Jam my finger in there. So if you can fit a thin card in this space here, then it's going to protect the plastic on this side, and then you can use a screwdriver to get in here. See if we can get another card in here. Squeeze it in. Okay, now that's created a gap. Let's get a smaller screwdriver. I've created a gap. There I can get the screwdriver underneath and pop it open like that. And see, no damage has been done to this plastic edge because it was protected by the cards. And it didn't do too much damage to this side either, just a little bit, a little bit of a nick there. 
So those are some different methods of trying to crack this open. It's not particularly easy, but it does come apart easily, but it's difficult to pry open. Here you can see how this is made. There's just some flexible snaps that snap in under these quite aggressive snaps back here. So they don't want you taking that off easily, which is unfortunate because if you were just using this, you'd probably need to clean or wash this on occasion. Here, if you compare the two, you can see how this HEPA filter is probably actually a lot more airflow efficient, even though the filter media is more restricted to the airflow, it's a lot more airflow efficient because there's just so much more surface area because of the pleats in here. Here you just have a piece of foam. As a vacuum cleaner gets used, if this builds up dust in it, then it's gonna lose its efficiency much more rapidly than this HEPA filter. Not only that, but this HEPA filter is easy to swap afterwards. You won't have to pry it open and risk injuring yourself like I did. And if you also notice that the original filter doesn't have the O-ring seal here. It looks like there is an orientation. There are some features down in here that this will slide around. I don't think it'll fit in this direction. So let's put it on with this opening at the bottom here. There we go. I believe that snapped in pretty well. What's interesting is how long this, this tube is here. I find, that, I find that interesting. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that length, if it's like it's for sound or something like that. Uh, because if you look like it goes pretty deep into this, deeper than it seems necessary versus like if it were cut shorter, it would be kind of less restrictive, I would say, and allow the airflow to distribute more rapidly to this part. But I suspect that if you take apart the Dyson one, they just model it right off of the Dyson one. And the last step of this HEPA retrofit is just to snap on the HEPA filter. And so now we have a retrofitted Dyson V7 or V8 with a HEPA filter in the place of the original foam filter. 